magnet on this seems extremely stronger like it has a nice snap to it whereas this one is like is it even there are you there god it's me magnet i don't think anyone's gonna get that joke but anyway It's me, Cora. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a review and demo and sort of a comparison between the Laura Mercier Artist palette. Let me give you a little bit of background information for those of you who are not totally up to speed on this. The Laura Mercier Artist palette was launched in 2013 in the fall and it sold out like blink of an eye and it was gone. This is actually my favorite eyeshadow palette. I use it all the time. This has definitely hit pan. I'm about to hit pan on some of the other colors. It's just a really great eyeshadow palette and I use it so frequently and the colors are just beautiful. The I like that it has the purple tones, some warmer tones. It's really a go-to palette for me. It's one that I absolutely am obsessed with. I rarely mention it in videos even though I use it so often in real life because I feel like I'm a big old tease talking about a palette you guys can't get or would have to spend a whole ton of money to buy all the individual shades for. I, although I do occasionally mention it as my favorite because it really, it just, it is. And a lot of you actually seem to know this pretty well because you guys let me know that the Laura Mercier palette was available again on the Sephora site. So here is the 2015 version and here is the 2013 version and as you can see it's all the same colors and everything uh, one thing that I thought was kind of dishonest was that on the website they showed the packaging for the 2000 13 edition which has this really cool like pebbled leather look to it which is one of the things I always found so elegant about it and this one has more of just like a, a painted on cardboard design with that said the magnet on this seems extremely stronger like it has a nice snap to it whereas this one is like is it even there are you there god it's me magnet I was really excited to get a backup because of course this is my favorite palette and the other thing that I was excited about was to see if this was in any way shape or form different because I had seen on some various blogs and some you know reviews and stuff that this was a little bit different than the original edition so I thought okay let's go ahead and test it let's find out if it's true and I am sorry to report that it is a little bit different than the original palette. As soon as this palette arrived, I went ahead and kind of looked at it against the other palette and was like, okay, some of these eyeshadows look a little different. So I went ahead and swatched them. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a swatch here where I have swatched light colors with light colors. Uh, the biggest ones that really stand out for me that are different would be Vanilla Nuts for sure and this was the biggest problem for me because Vanilla Nuts is my all-time favorite highlight. I don't, it's kind of a toss-up for me which one's my favorite. They're both pink-based creams um, and that is the one from the original palette. Now in the 2015 version it's a little bit more like the actual single that Laura Mercier sells of Vanilla Nuts which is a little bit more yellow, a little bit more beige. It's not as bright of a highlight. <sighs> Such a bummer such a bummer that it's not identical. Something that I found to be kind of interesting though is I feel that violet ink from the new palette is actually more pigmented. It kind of goes both ways. There's colors that are maybe better in the new palette and there's colors that were much better in the original palette. This is when you swatch an eyeshadow and the differences can be so much more obvious when you just swatch them side by side. So I decided today to actually do my eyeshadow half from the new palette and half from the old palette. So that is what I've done today. Could you guys tell that I had done these with the two different palettes? Probably not. Okay, so let's get started with this makeup demo. Super exciting. All right, so I'm starting out with the Makeup Almond Cream, oh, Makeup Almond Cream, Milani Almond Cream. This is kind of similar to like a MAC Paint Pot. It's like a concealer eyeshadow base in one. It's a little bit drier than a MAC Paint Pot, but it's certainly cheaper and it works perfectly fine with these eyeshadows. So I'm starting out with Vanilla Nuts, which is um, I'm starting with the one from the 2015 palette, which is a little bit creamier and a little bit yellower than the original one. Initially, I thought I didn't like it as much, but after using it and seeing it when I was, you know, editing this, I realized that it's a bit smoother actually than the original version, uh, or the original version from the pa the original 2013 palette. Sorry if I'm confusing you at any point with this. It's you know. It's a little bit weird because these are available in the permanent version of the eyeshadows and then they're available in the 2013 palette and then they're available in the 2015 palette. Um, now I'm using Fresco, which is one of my all time favorite transitional colors. For those of you who have a fair complexion and don't want to use something that's too yellow or something that's too gray or too orange or anything, Fresco is such a perfect transitional color for the crease, especially if you have a hooded lid, kind of like what I have not totally hooded but slightly hooded and you're trying to create the illusion of a deeper crease this one works perfectly 
and uh, I'm just using it on both sides. I was concerned initially that the new one wasn't going to be as pigmented as the new fresco but actually I think it was more pigmented because I ended up having to go back for more dips of the 2013 version. So that's just one of those things that shows you you can't always tell everything from a swatch. Okay, so when I went to do African Violet, I put it, of course, on both sides from, you know, the respective palettes. And before I applied them, I put on the Marc Jacob Twinkle Pop in On The Verge because I know that these are just not, it's not a super shiny eyeshadow and I did want to have a shiny eyeshadow on today. Unfortunately, my camera completely did not film any of this, which is a super bummer because I really was interested in showing you guys that portion. But I think that when you guys see the two eyeshadows, you know, side by side in a photo or in the video and stuff, you can see that the original African Violet certainly is brighter and shinier and you know there was really no difference in the way that I applied them. Moving on, I am taking Violet Ink from the 2015 palette and this is one that was better in the 2015 palette. Now for both of these I used the same brush, this little tiny brush I have from V Neal that I just absolutely love for doing outer corner eyeshadow stuff or any kind of detailed stuff. I used the same brush on both eyes but I flipped it over so I wasn't you know mixing the eyeshadows and you can see the 2013 version is a little bit patchier. This really surprised me. I, I completely expected for the, you know, the 2013 one to be better across the board, but there are colors that are better from one palette to another, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, once I apply that color in that certain shape that I did, sort of like a slightly angled kind of line thing, I go ahead and blend that out with the 217 in a combination of back and forth and sort of like a C like stroke where I kind of take it from the outer corner and, and curve it in towards the eye. The 2013, I also needed a little bit more blending, so I had to call in a clean blending brush to go ahead and blend that out a little bit because it was being a little bit stubborn, which was weird. I feel like I've never really experienced that with this eyeshadow before, but maybe I have and I just never really paid much attention to it because the overall end result was nicer, but it was interesting to do that side by side with the other. Uh, then I'm taking Bamboo, which is a really great, again, transitional color. It's a little bit lighter and sheerer compared to Fresco, and it's obviously a completely different color. But it's one I like to put in the outer crease, especially for people who sometimes have problems with purples. This just really grounds the look and helps the whole thing be a little bit more of a neutral base. It's something you guys, I, I reiterate this all the time, that having a little little neutral in with a colorful eyeshadow look will make all the difference in how it looks professional, perfectly done as opposed to just kind of looking like you slapped on a bunch of color. Obviously these are neutralish kind of colors anyway, but nevertheless, same principle applies. Now I'm taking the Urban Decay Rockstar Liner, which is my all-time favorite purple eyeliner. I use this thing so much. I've gone through many, many of them. And here you can see me applying a little bit of African Violet over that color. This is something I do to make a nice, smooth, uh, kind of blended out eyeliner look where I want my lashes to look thicker, but I don't want it to look like, hi, I'm wearing eyeliner. Now I'm taking a little white eyeliner in the waterline. I haven't actually worn white in the waterline in quite some time. Today just felt like, you know, let's bust out the OCC feather. Again, with the Urban Decay Rockstar Liner, I love this stuff, it's fantastic. And I just blur that out with a little Q-tip and then you saw I had like a little blurby on my inner, inner rim, so I went ahead and fixed that with the white. My lash torture device from Tweezer Man, super fun. And then a little mascara. This is the Bobbi Brown No Smudge Mascara. I will be reviewing this in my Favorites of the Month video. I just wanted to show you guys a full application of it. I'm not sure if I had before, um, top and bottom. I don't, I don't love this on the bottom, but every now, like today it totally turned out fantastic, but normally I don't like the way it looks on the bottom. Next I'm taking Sparkling Dew and I'm applying that in the inner corner and I'm gonna do this pretty generously. I'm going to even apply a little bit sort of down far because it's slightly lighter than my skin tone, but it, bl it can blend in a little bit and it's a satin texture. It looks really beautiful when you blend it in that way. And you can see that the 2013 version is a little bit chalkier and powderier than the 2015 version. So again, this was another surprise that I actually liked the 2015 version better. All right, and then for my lips today, I am using a red lipstick. I mean, obviously. <laughs> this is the Marc Jacobs So Rouge lipstick. It's a really nice creamy color. Uh, this lipstick is only available if you're VIB Rouge. Don't even get me started on the VIB Rouge program. I need to do a RAM video. Anyway, if you want a color that's really similar, the uh, MAC lipstick in Prolong, one of their Prolong Wear lipsticks, it's almost identical. So go ahead and pick that one up as an alternative. It's also very creamy, smooth, and long wearing. And that is the completed look. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. So the older palette has a slightly shinier color and of course the highlight is better. <sighs> Overall, they look about the same. I mean, it's so, it's so close to really splitting hairs here. So 
Question being, do I recommend picking up this palette? Do I think that they've changed it in any way that makes it, you know, not usable or something I think is an inferior product? And the answer is, I would totally recommend picking this up. Yeah, they've changed it a little bit. You know, there's an eyeshadow or two here that aren't identical, you know, would swatch side by side. But in practice, it looks almost identical. Um, the few little tweaks that you might need to make would be maybe apply uh, African Violet wet so it's a little bit shinier. And to be honest, it's never been a super shiny eyeshadow. In terms of the highlight, it's a bummer that Vanilla Nuts doesn't match exactly, but you could always take Sparkling Dew, place that underneath Vanilla Nuts, apply Vanilla Nuts on top, and you're gonna get an effect that's very similar to the one that you got in the original palette. Speaking of sparkling dew, I actually prefer the texture of this one. So it's interesting, again, to see some of the ones that actually are better in this palette than they are in the original. So there you go. That is my review, comparison, demo, tutorial. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. This was really fun for me to do because this is a palette that I just have been obsessed with and I've kind of like held back my obsession with it. Just such a jaded, skeptical person I had to buy the new palette to find out if it was going to be identical to the old one because I didn't want to say, hey, go get this and then it'd be different and have you guys be like, what the f or these are not the same. I know this is definitely not groundbreaking or anything. They're palettes that are almost identical, but it's something that this, I mean, this is my favorite eyeshadow palette, so it felt really important to me to be able to know for sure whether or not this was identical, knowing that they're not identical, but this this certainly looks almost identical. I mean, can you tell the difference on the eyes? No, not really. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be yourself. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.